Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use uh, Xanos authentication in Bubble. So that's going to be the sign up and login flow and passing the uh, authentication token that Xano creates um, all done in Bubble. So let's go ahead um, and start off here. Let me show you our, the database first. I've just got a couple users in here um, just with a name, an email, password and their favorite food here. So those will be the users we'll use uh, to log in. And then if we jump to the API in Xano and open up our default API group where all our auto-generated CRUD API endpoints are, uh, we're gonna focus on these three endpoints here. Um, so first, obviously, the sign up and login endpoint. But then this auth me, we're going to uh, use this endpoint because it requires authentication um, to pass the auth token generated uh, by either the sign up or the login endpoint in order to execute this auth me. And this auth me just gets the record uh, of the user based on the uh, unique identification in that authorization token. Uh, so for example, if I run this here in Xano, we can grab one of these tokens, we'll grab Michael. And if I run this, we'll see we just get uh, Michael's information back. And also if we uh, grab that for Andy, uh, we'll see, we'll just get his information back. Um, so let's go ahead and jump over to Bubble, okay? And first I wanna jump to the Bubble API connector and show you uh, the endpoints that I set up. So first we'll look at the signup. So let me go and expand this. Um, so all I did is grab this uh, URL from Xano here. I just went to sign up, grab this URL, and I came back to Bubble and pasted this in. I'm using it as an action because we wanna be able to um, sign up the user as an action, right? We wanna use that in the bubble workflow, okay? Um, and then the body schema here, I just grabbed this from the debugger in Xano. Um, I put these uh, brackets here for dynamic values. And then I just put in some uh, test information here. And I unchecked private here so we could make this uh, information dynamic. So that way, when I go to initialize the call, it'll be like it is signing up a user and you can see the return is this auth token for a signed up user. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save that. And then let's go ahead, I'll collapse this. Uh, let's next look at the login API endpoint. So I'll go ahead and expand this. And in the same way I did with the sign up endpoint, um, I just came to Xano and grabbed this uh, URL for the login. And then I came back to Bubble, I pasted this in. Remember, uh, it's a post, I didn't mention that on the sign up, but it is a post verb. And you can easily find that in Xano right there, right there in green. Um, so once again, we're using it as an action. And then I did the same thing with the body here. I just grabbed it from the debugger, um, email and password. Uh, make sure those are dynamic values um, and in between the quotation marks. And then here in the body parameters, because it's login, we actually need to put in an existing user in order to initialize this call. Make sure to uncheck private uh, because that allows for the value to be dynamic when we're working in bubble. So if I, uh, I'll reinitialize the call here and you can see this also generates this authorization token. So I'll go ahead and save that. Um, and then last but not least is our auth me endpoint here. So this is uh, what the data the user is gonna see once they actually sign up or log in and land on uh, a page with their information. So if I go ahead and I expand this, uh, a couple things here. So first, same way I grabbed that auth me uh, right from Xana. Um, and then also the headers here. So uh, we wanna actually go ahead and add the header at this level. Um, and instead of doing this uh, authentication private key and header, because I guess that kind of hard codes um, that auth token if we do it from this level. But if we do it on the API call and add this header here, we can actually make this token dynamic uh, and therefore use it throughout our flow. Uh, so all I did is added a header here. Um, the method for JWE tokens, which is what Xana uses, is authorization. And then the value is uh, make sure you have bearer in there. And then all I did is I grabbed one of the auth tokens of one of my users. I can very easily get that either by running the sign up or login endpoint, or sorry, yep, the sign up or login endpoint, or I can come to an endpoint requiring authentication, 
grab it from one of these headers here um, and simply just hit copy and then come back to bubble and paste it after bearer. And then unchecking private allows us to make it dynamic and use it in the bubble workflow. So if I go ahead and I reinitialize the call, you can see I get uh, the information for user two. So that was user two's auth token there. So I can go ahead and save that. So that does it for um, our three different endpoints here, sign up, login, and auth me. Let's go ahead and um, first we'll look at the design. And this is just my sign up and login page, right? So depending on what you use, you probably will have maybe a, a login only page or a sign up page, uh, just depending on your use case. But I just have these different uh, input boxes here and then each one has the submit button. And on the submit button, that's where we do the bubble workflow. Um, so for example here, um, on click, I'll jump to uh, the workflow here. So when submit button is clicked, and this is for uh, the sign up, uh, what we're going to do is um, we, I'll, here, I'll click here, add new action, because I already have it up here, but you would go to uh, plugins, and then you grab that sign up API call. And then here, instead of this hard-coded data, you would insert dynamic data and you would find the input uh, according to that field. And that this is why you might want to do it on different pages because as you can see, um, I have a couple different input emails and passwords, so you just have to make sure to differentiate uh, between those. But um, as you can see, I'll go ahead and uh, actually just delete this one. But as you can see here on the sign up, I have this dynamic value. So the input names value, the input emails value, and the input passwords value uh, right in here. And that is on click. And then what I do, because we need to pass that auth token uh, to the next page in order to run that API endpoint, what we do is we go to a new page and I have this one go to one called new user home. And the data to send is the result of step one which is the sign up API call. And then it is uh, the auth token. So result of step one, which is the sign up API call, that's what I name it, it's the auth token. And then what we need to do in order to actually use that token on the next page is we need to uh, do check this box that says send more parameters to the page. We can give the um, auth token a name. I called it my token here. And then it's gonna be the same thing as data to send. So it's the result of step one, which is the sign up to API calls auth token, and that's on click. So that'll allow us to uh, use that auth token in the header for uh, that auth me endpoint, okay? So let me go ahead and I'm going to actually jump to that new user homepage. And so now on this uh, new user homepage, so when a brand new user signs up and logs in, this is where they, where they will land. Um, what I've done here is I've made this group of two different text fields in this group the data source is this auth me API call, okay? And because we put that header where we did, it allows us to make that actually dynamic. So now what I can do here in this header authorization, I can go ahead, I'd have to type in bearer, but then I'd have this dynamic uh, data here after. So I'm getting my auth token from a page URL. So, um, you have to actually type in the parameter name that you name, so it's important to remember, remember that in the workflow. Um, but just to show you here how you would actually find that, um, let's go ahead and let me delete this. So we can uh, do it from scratch here. So uh, Bubble allows you to insert dynamic data. You would go to get data from page URL, and then I would type in the name of that parameter I created that contains my token. Okay, so let me go ahead and make sure I have bearer typed in here because that's the format that JWE tokens make. And so that should all work. So now let's go ahead and uh, just jump back to our sign up page and let's go ahead and preview this real quick. And we'll go ahead and just create a new user. I'm not sure why the styling uh, has shifted there. And it looks like I have to use tab here. So we'll just go ahead and say, uh, this is a new user. Email will be um, this at is new.com. And then password, we'll say password123. And then let me get to that submit button and hit enter. 
And now you can see uh, we'll be taken to the this is my info page. We're displaying uh, this is a new user and this is asnew.com, which is that new user's information uh, based on that auth token we passed. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look up the login flow. It's going to be very similar. So I created just an email and password um, input form here. And now if we go to the workflow, um, when this button is submitted, uh, and I actually have them go to a separate page, uh, you could probably write um, some kind of, make some kind of way in a bubble to have it go to the same page. I just happen to have it go to two different page. Uh, because the already created user has that uh, a little more information I'll show you in a second. So um, once again, we would uh, pick the plugins, pick the login API call, just like this, and make sure to put in the inputs value of email and the inputs password as value right here in the body. Um, and then we're going to go to the next page. And the same thing as we did with sign up is we are just doing the result of step one, which is that API calls auth token um, and then we have to send more parameters to the page we have to check that that'll allow us to have this uh, key and then we can put in dynamically the result of the login API calls auth token so we can use it on the next page so now um, if I go to home here and let me go to design you can see I have three groups here because I had that food category so I just wanted to show that we're in fact not passing data just from that first page, but we're in fact hitting that auth me API endpoint and using the auth token to actually pull this data. Um, so in the same way, I have that auth me API call and then I'm doing bearer. And once again, I'm getting um, from the page URL, the login uh, token. So remember to name that token with a key that you'll remember so you can put it here in the parameter name. So now let's go ahead and just jump back to our login page. Let's go ahead and preview this. Bubble will reload here. And let me just tab over there. And so I'll say Michael at email.com and I'll say password uh, 123 and I'll hit submit. And from there, we'll be able to see Michael, my email and the food I like, which is tacos. So. Uh, there you have it. That's how you do uh, just a basic sign up and login flow uh, using Xano's authentication to pass the token uh, with Bubble as the front end. So I hope you found this was helpful and I hope you can use this if you're using Xano and Bubble together. Thank you for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, uh, please like it. Please subscribe it. It helps uh, other people who are looking for this content do the same thing. So much appreciated.